Did you know that you can actually repair your weapons and shields in Tears of the Kingdom? This is a feature that wasn't available in Breath of the Wild. And not only can you repair your favorite weapons, but you can also roll to upgrade their stats as well. Now the process for this is surprisingly simple, but there's actually a lot that we need to go over. For the first example, I'm going to go over repairing and upgrading this Black Lizzle Blade, which is my favorite weapon at the moment, and I want to make it even more powerful. So if you head northeast from Central Hyrule up to Death Mountain, you can go to Goron City and pick up the shrine that's right here. If we head just a little bit north from the shrine, right on this little plateau, on the other side of it, you're going to see one of these Octoroks. Now you can find these pretty much all over Death Mountain, and what we need to do is kind of get up close to it. We need to make sure we unequip the weapon that we want. And then once our weapon is not equipped, we just drop that bad boy on the ground. Make sure to equip a shield. It really helps when your weapon doesn't get blown away, but make sure to equip a shield. There we go. So it's gonna suck it inside of its dirty little body. You're gonna get a little sparkle and then it's gonna spit it back out at you. Now, if we pick it back up, we're gonna notice that not only has the black Lizzle Blade been fully repaired, but it also now has a new stat. But the interesting thing about these Royal Guard Claymores is they're actually more powerful just before they break. I'm gonna have a separate video on why that is absolutely amazing. It sounds bad, but it's actually really good. But maybe we want to re-roll that upgrade that we got. So the thing about this is Octorox can only repair and upgrade one of your weapons once a Blood Moon. And there are only a limited amount of them available around Death Mountain. So what I recommend doing is once you find an Octorok, go ahead and just make a save game. Now what we can do is actually save scum the repair and upgrade of our weapon until we get something that we want. Wait for it to blow out its thing, go into your menu. We're going to redrop this black lizzle blade, which is now oh, still, which is now back to being, which is now being back to almost broken. Drop that bad boy on the ground, take out our shields, well, suck it into your body, you dirty little Octorok. And this time, instead of getting durability up, we have attack up plus five. This time I got critical hit, so you can see how this process works. Now, the next important thing is not only can it only repair one item per blood moon, and I really do mean that. So if we open up our menu, so let's, let's take the Hylian shield, for instance. If we drop this, equip another shield so that way we can block with it. And yes, you can repair the Hylian shield with it. Whoop, come back. Baby, come back. You'll see that it doesn't have that new sparkle of being healed because we already uh, healed and upgraded our Black Lizzle Blade. So it's not like you can do weapon, it's not like you can do a weapon and a shield, it's just one item per Blood Moon. Now, one thing that's cool about this is you can actually rebuy the Hylian Shield, but perhaps you want to upgrade the Hylian Shield and you can continuously do this because it's so hard to break as it is. As you progress through the game, you can come back, reroll stats in your Hylian Shield and continuously make it even better. Now, what's interesting is it seems like there's certain weapons that can't actually be healed this way. So if we drop if we drop our fierce deity sword that we got, which is both an amiibo weapon and a weapon you can find in the game, the Octorok is not actually able to heal it or upgrade it, which is really weird and I'm not sure why that's a thing. It seems to be the same way with any amiibo weapon, whether you find them in the game or not, they can't be healed or upgraded. Now, one of the reasons that I really wanted to upgrade the Black Lizzle Blade is because that attack up plus five when it's badly damaged actually becomes attack plus 10 because it doubles the damage when it's near breaking. And there's actually a trick you can do to make sure this weapon never breaks when you're fighting Lynels, which can be really powerful. But what's even better about this particular weapon is say we get even a better item like the blue maned Linel Saber Horn. Linel. <laughs> I have a habit of calling them Linels instead of Lynels because it's more funny. Um, and what we can do is if we unfuse or destroy the fused material, and if we go back and refuse it to this bad boy, you're gonna see that now we have a weapon with 140 damage, which is just absolutely ridiculous. I think it tops out around 170 something uh, until you get more attack plus up, which is, it just can become astronomically powerful. There's also another Octorok right nearby, near this skull. And there's actually quite a few in this area just near the shrine for Goron City. There's one right here, there's another one here, and then there's another one right up here. And I know there's more around the map as well. If you have the sensor plus for your Pura pad, you can actually track them down. But it's really nice being able to know where just even a few of them are because if you want to be able to upgrade your items, you can literally just come back here anytime there's a blood moon. You can repair and or upgrade. Oh my God, my shield is gone. <laughs> there it is. You can repair and or upgrade your weapons as you progress through the game and keep your favorite stuff at all times. So it's a really 
amazing trick and so happy to see that it's a thing actually in Tears of the Kingdom. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next one.